Jeff Jackson is the Democrat now representing North Carolina's 14th congressional district and one of the nearly 80 new House members in the 118th Congress. He spent nearly 20 years in the military before running for office and told C-SPAN about being the second youngest member of North Carolina's state Senate before coming to Capitol Hill. I was 31. And what did you learn? I learned that people faithfully represent their constituencies, even if I sometimes find that frustrating, that representatives usually are a pretty good gauge of what people back home where they live think and believe, and you should treat that really seriously. And the first step is understanding, not persuasion. Why did you run for public office? Well, this is a job. It's a different kind of job. It's not normal. But at the end of the day, it is just a job. And you can use this job to do different things. And there's a long list of things that I'd like to use this job for, local needs at home, infrastructure, things like that. But what I really want to use this job for is to show people what I think the next chapter in politics could look like. Because I think we're in a really dark chapter. I think the country is going to change more over the next 20 years than it did in the last 20 years because of technology. That's remarkable. The pace of change is accelerating. And I think we need to exit this very dark chapter of politics as soon as possible so we can make sure that we go through this change in a way that doesn't pull us apart. Tell us about your military career. I enlisted uh, somewhat after September 11th. Um, wasn't planning on making the military part of my life, but September 11th created that detour. Certainly wasn't planning on spending 20 years as a member of the military. I'm as surprised as anyone in my family that I'm still in. I got drill coming up this weekend. I gotta get a haircut before I show up. Um, it has meant a lot to me. It has meant a lot to my family. Um, and I'm really glad that I did that. Where did you serve? Served in Afghanistan between 2005 and 2006, but have spent time at various military installations uh, across the country. And what did the military teach you? that you can bring to the halls of Congress? What being in the military is actually about is learning to work in teams. So you get thrown into a new team because teams are always rotating. And no matter who these people are, you got to find a way to work together to accomplish a mission. So you get good at getting thrown into a situation with, with relative strangers and figuring out, okay, this person's good at this, this person's good at that. Here's how we use each other's strengths. It's about learning small team strength utilization. Where does your political philosophy come from? Um, well, I think the two foundational values for our country are liberty and equality. And if you look at some of our founding documents, you see this running theme, um, the Gettysburg Address. And I think we're always, in our policy debates, what we're really trying to do is figuring out where to put the fulcrum between liberty and equality. Because these are two interesting values. You have to have one in order to have the other, but you can never have 100% of both there are always these balances and trade-offs. And so what we're really doing when we're talking about healthcare or housing or anything is sort of figuring out, all right, on this, where do we want to put the fulcrum between liberty and equality? So my political philosophy is let's be thoughtful about how we do that. Let's recognize that both of these are indispensable values and let's have an honest conversation around that. Congressman, you are a member of Congress, which is a grueling schedule. You have kids as well. You know, how do you balance all of this and sort of what's your, how do you relax when you have some downtime? There's no balance, <laughs> okay? It's a juggle and you try not to drop any balls, but you drop balls all the time. So you try to pick them up as quickly as possible and not be too self-judgmental about the fact that you cannot get to the end of your to-do list in this job. And that's an uncomfortable feeling for someone like me. Every time I go to bed, I know there are three or four things that I didn't get to and I tend to beat myself up about that and you just can't do that. That's where burnout comes from, having this never-ending to-do list that you beat yourself up for. So you just gotta, you gotta exhale. You gotta inhale deep and you gotta exhale. <laughs>